Do you have examples of cases where it worked out well, like uh, that competition is good for the progress of science? Yeah, it almost always is good in that sense. So. <laughs> It's just painful for the individuals involved. Can be, yeah. It doesn't have to be, you know, nasty, although sometimes it is. So on the space, like for the example of the optics, could you comment on that one? Well, yeah, sure. Let me, there are several, but I could give you, um... all right, so I'll give you this example that probably is the most pertinent. Um, the first uh polytechnic school like MIT or Caltech was actually founded in France during the French Revolution. It exists today. It's the Ecole Polytechnique, mm -hmm. right? Uh, two people who were there uh, were two young men in the 90s, 1790s, uh, named on the one hand Francois Arago and the other Jean-Baptiste Biot. They both lived a long time, well into the 1850s. Arago became a major administrator of science, and B.O.'s career started to peter out after about the late teens. Now, they are uh, sent on an expedition, which was one of the expeditions involving measuring things to start the metric system. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more to that story. Anyway, they come back. Arago gets separated. He's captured. Uh, by uh, pirates, actually, winds up in uh, Tangier, escapes, is captured again. Everybody thinks he's dead. He gets back to Paris and so on. He's greeted as a hero and whatnot. In the meantime, Bio has pretty much published some of the stuff that he's done, and Arago doesn't get much credit for it, and Arago gets, starts to get very angry. And Bio is known for this kind of thing. So Arago, anyway... B.O. starts investigating a new phenomenon in optics involving something called polarization. Mm -hmm. And he writes all kinds of stuff on it. Arago it, looks into this and decides to write some things as well. And actually, B.O. gets mostly interested in it when he finds out that Arago is doing stuff. Yeah. Now, B.O. is actually the better scientist in a lot of ways. But Arago is furious about this, so furious that he actually demands and forces the leader of French science, Laplace, the Marquis de Laplace, uh, and cohorts to write a note in the published journal saying, oh, excuse us, um, uh, actually, Arago, et cetera, et cetera, yeah, yeah. blah, blah. So Arago continues to just hold this antipathy and fear of B.O. So what happens? 1815, uh, Napoleon is finished at Waterloo, right? A young Frenchman by the name of Augustin Fresnel was in the army, is going back to his home on the north coast of France in Normandy. He passes through Paris. Arago is friends with Fresnel's uncle, uh, who's the head of the Ecole des Beaux-Arts at the time. Anyway, Fresnel is al already interested in certain things in light, and he talks to Arago. Arago tells him a few things. Fresnel goes home, and Fresnel is a brilliant experimenter. He observes things, and he's a very good mathematician, calculates things. He writes something up. He sends it to Arago. Arago looks at it, and Arago says to himself, I can use this to get back at B.O. Mm -hmm. He brings Fresnel to Paris, sets him up in a room at the observatory where Arago is for Fresnel to continue his work. Paper after paper comes out, undercutting everything B.O. had done. What is it about jealousy and just envy that could be an engine of creativity and, and productivity? Versus like an Einstein where it seems like not. <laughs> I don't know which one is better. I guess it depends on the personality. Both are useful engines in science. Well, in this particular story, it's um, maybe even more interesting because Fresnel himself, the young guy, he knew what Arago was doing with him and he didn't like it. Yeah, He didn't want to get with He wrote his brother, said, I, you know, I don't want to get in an argument with B. I just want to do my stuff. Yeah. Arago is using him 
But it's because Arago kept pushing him to go into certain areas that stuff kept coming out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, ego is beautiful.